Hi everyone, this is a talk index do-it-yourself and my name is Andre Bardin. I am working for Yandex Cloud and I am really glad you find the time and uh, you are watching this video. At Yandex we have a lot of Postgres uh, and uh, many Yandex services like Yandex Mail, Yandex Taxi, Yandex Mail and others live in Yandex Cloud uh, po uh, managed Postgres clusters and uh, we have total of about a, li a little more than two petabytes of Postgres uh, which generate about three million requests per second. Few words about me. Uh, I am contributing to Postgres since 2016. Uh, I am working on uh, Postgres clusters at Yandex Cloud. I am working on uh, disaster recovery system WALG. Connection Pooler Odyssey, and actually, um, personally, I'm most most interested uh, in indexing, and uh, that's how I got into Postgres, and that's that uh, what excites me the most. And today we are going to talk about what is access method and why you want and create one and uh, how to do this, and uh, I will try to give you some ideas for hacking. A few years ago, Alexander Karatkov made a beautiful presentation about Postgres extensibility uh, in a way how to create access methods, and uh, this is this this was a presentation aimed at core developers how to make Postgres extensibility better. Uh, I've tried to get everything from this presentation. Uh, make it very 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 simple and uh, uh, describe how to start with your own access method how to try to implement your ideas and uh, first we should talk about what is access method when you have a data type what is data type data type, data, data type is basically two functions uh, functions which function which, which describe how to interpret data into on disk format uh, in function and out function which describe how to interpret data from disk back to uh, user value uh, access method is uh, in turn an idea how to search within data so uh, for example b3 is idea of searching within sorted objects uh, GIST is idea of searching from generic object description to specific object description to specific object. And GIN is idea of searching uh, big object by small object part. And uh, hash is idea of searching uh, um, uh, object within a small subset defined by the same sub hash function. So. Access method is an idea how to search and idea implemented in fun C functions. Uh, if you want access method to uh, combine with a data type, you have to uh, define operator class. Operator class uh, is a fu C functions which describe how uh, idea applies to on disk data type. And then when you have a table, you can define stable expression over table and uh, combining it with operator class uh, create an index and then when you have a query in your database optimizer will ask index uh, which in turn will invoke access method function how costly it would be to uh, execute such a search uh, access method and index will answer that it will cost us <laughs> something milliseconds something something like milliseconds and the uh, optimizer will uh, this planner will decide uh, whether to call this access method or that access method or do the sequential scan and just scan through all the data uh, when uh, index can be used when you execute a query with where operator uh, over uh, here expression may be a column or so something uh, stable so some functions called over the uh, column values uh, but expression uh, but where clause uh, can be implicit in uh, in a join for example um, or in a condition of uh, aggregation 
Uh, also, some indexes can return sorted data. For example, B3 can return sorted data. And some indexes can return data sorted by operator against uh, some um, value. This is called, uh, for example, uh, nearest neighbor search. Uh, this is a schema from uh, Alexander's presentation. So, uh, access method creates index which helps us to find uh, tuple identifiers uh, inside the heap uh, via index scan. That's it. So, access method is set of functions necessary to create index, while index is something that provides us t uh, tuple identifiers uh, according to some search criteria. Why would you want to create your own access method? Uh, most of the time, uh, this is uh, due to some research projects. Well, all, most of uh, currently existing access methods were created in research projects. Maybe they have some like ancient ideas, but uh, they're uh, uh, efforts to systematize and uh, to, to grab things together uh, were done in a scientific academic uh, academic projects. Uh, and uh, when you are creating your idea how to search within the data, um, you should remember that when you are implementing your search uh, idea as a Postgres extension, it's rock hard. It's it's real. It's working, but uh, it's a little bit harder to compete with those who create simpler proof proof of concept implementation because uh, Postgres makes you to think about all the small important details, and uh, it's uh, harder to create uh, good numbers for in benchmarks because uh, you basically you can't lie anywhere. Uh, if you created uh, this index and you can give someone an extension, it means it works. Any, anyone with the data in Postgres can reproduce your numbers quite easily. Also, you may want to create lossy index. What does that mean? Uh, index in SQL standard uh, says that uh, well. Uh, result of a query do not uh, depend on existence of any indexes. So uh, when you run a query with index or without index, you get the same result. Uh, so indexes are exact, always returning the same result of top tuple identifiers. But sometimes you want uh, to do approximation of a search or you want to trade off some correctness for performance. Uh, you may want to create an index uh, which is executing search like find me something within 10 milliseconds, then give up. Uh, you could create it on higher level of abstractions, but here it can also have its own meaning too. And uh, also one of important points here is motivation to learn. This is how I got uh, to hacking on Postgres. I had a few ideas which I wanted to implement in uh, GIST, generalized search trees. And I started to doing this and then I wanted to show it to uh, other others who use GIST and uh, it really motivates to learn a lot. Finally, I, <laughs> I'm working on Postgres and not only on indexes. Most of my day job is not about indexes, but still indexes and researching indexes is, is, is what drives me through learning uh, code, code base of Postgres, which is um, it's, it's well documented, it's well commented, but it's a lot and it's, uh, it's complex. So you, you actually need motivation to uh, learn it good. Uh, sometimes you want to uh, make something more specific. So, most of our indexes are very abstract and can be used in many, 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 many different ways. But there are some needs and caveats. And so, uh, if you want something specific for your data type, for your search 
searches for your workload, uh, you may want to create uh, index as in core, but in an extension. And finally, uh, you may want to try something from commit fest. So you see this, some nice build or some nice data type or some nice search or some nice, ni nice login enhancement on the commit fest and want to try it. And uh, how safe is it? Basically, if you apply patch which was not reviewed to your production server, so you are really you really like to risk <laughs> something may go wrong. What can go wrong if you experiment in in index as extension? Uh, most expected uh, fail is when something like faults, something crashes uh, during execution of a search, and it's no big deal, just drop your extension and your searches will go through regular indexes. Uh, worse when your, uh, your uh, extension fails through uh, right head login replay, then uh, your standbys will stop applying right head login and they will accumulate lag behind primary uh, instance. Uh, Worse when you uh, when your postmaster goes down because your uh, for, because for example uh, your access method failed during critical section and all database shut downs for a moment but in a moment you will be reconnected to Postgres not a big deal just drop that extension first uh, if if it have some error. and finally worse thing uh, when your extension uh, stops vacuuming. It fails during vacuum, it prevents vacuum from running and eventually if you don't have uh, good monitoring of potential wraparound uh, you can have a big downtime but it's very unlikely. So uh, index as extensions will not corrupt your data and probably will not delay your production. So, so it's like trade-off you can try something or, or uh, you, you are absolutely safe to do something in, in development environment. Uh, what you have to do to implement uh, index as extension? You have to create empty extension, define an index handler, a function which return pointers to other functions which you need to, um, which Postgres need to uh, do searches. Uh, you have to implement uh, data in, like data insertion, and data out, like index scan or scanning through your data. And uh, currently you need to implement vacuum. Uh, and if you want to see your extension on uh, replicas, you also have to have wall right head login. Uh, and all this done sound like 20 minutes adventure. It may be much more, but let's try to do this in code. So, let's fork gist out of a core to extension. Here we, I have Postgres sources with pretty recent commit. Uh, and uh, let's go to contrib and uh, create uh, my drist. Uh, let's go to my drist and we need to copy make file out of a bloom index uh, copy control file and uh, and sql part also we need sources of uh, gist itself it's in uh, sources backend access gist and we need pretty much pretty much everything since written on C and we need include files uh, include uh, access gist everything about gist yep uh, let's see what we have here here is our where is our new here our new extension we need to rename everything here like my gist It. 
just replace everything that is not necessary. Here we have export of uh, bloom handler function. We need to rename it to my gist handler and no, no, my gist handler and that's it. And in make file uh, we need to get every part of uh, of uh, actual gist. Let's try to compile what we have. Save all and make. Make install. Uh, one more thing that we need. Uh, we need actually. Uh, we need actually gist model magic to declare a new model. Model. Uh, and it's no more gist handler, it's uh, my gist handler. And also we need to mark it. Um, let's get uh, main information from um, Bloom. And where is handler? Is it? Um, and pg module magic. Well, make install, create new database, uh, start it, start connect it, and create extension my gist boom it works but we need elsa support for uh, some operator type operator class uh, i i think it's easiest way is to create support for cube um, we need to install it also you make install boom it's here let's go to cube and and cube cube sql we see it's separator class for cube uh, for gist but now it's separator class for my gist yep and that's it not uh, very hard to go hmm. Let's embed it into our extension. Uh, my my gist make install. Now drop extension my gist and create extension my gist again. Create table t uh, select cube random random from generate series one thousands one thousand of elements we insert into a table create index on t using my gist probably column cube oh our new gist works select everything from t where cube inside cube cube one zero one it works somehow and check that it's uh, it selects our new index it uses our fork gist that's it cool forks so while this example works fine uh, there is one important thing missing is right ahead login if you want your index will be able to survive crash uh, accidental stop of uh, postmaster if you want to observe your index 
on uh, standby you have to implement right ahead login if you just copy paste uh, implementation of right ahead login from the core uh, you your replay functions will be calling regular uh, gist functions and uh, they will end up constructing something that may be not compat compatible with uh, things that you changed uh, inside your index as extension so you have to use generic right ahead login this is a quite simple change so anywhere where you are going to modify your uh, data on a page you are not using regular buffer get page you are using a generic log register buffer uh, what does it mean you tell a generic log uh, generic write ahead login that uh, you are going to change this buffer please uh, find what have changed uh, and uh, write this uh, to uh, x log uh, why is it it's done this way uh, extension cannot register its own uh, resource manager uh, resource manager is a set of read uh, right head login reader functions and uh, because creation of extension is also well uh, right head logged uh, so uh, you have to use generic right head login which will reconstruct uh, data of your index even if binaries of your index are not present on a standby replica. Uh, you don't have to call specific uh, um, log functions like uh, uh, this is done currently in any other access method. For example, uh, here is a diff for uh, updating a split of uh, pages uh, in gist where uh, we had a whole function to log what changed uh, uh, not split, delete, delete of items on a page and uh, we just uh, exchange it is, uh, um, th this function with colon uh, generic xlog full image full image is costly you better register your bu buffer before uh, doing change and uh, when you call xlog finish uh, generic xlog uh, will write what actually changed there uh, also, one important caveat is your contract with vacuum. You, for prototypes, you can uh, avoid implementing vacuum at all, but you have to do not return tuple identifiers, which can be found in a heap anymore. So, a uh, minimal heap is uh, standing with this contract uh, when you are uh, just removing tuple IDs uh, from from the index that are not uh, visible. That do not exist in the heap anymore. Uh, there is a minimal uh, example of index as extension uh, within uh, Postgres source repository. It's called dummy index. Uh, it's uh, it it is extension which looks as an index. It cannot run actually any searches, uh, but uh, it have all the infrastructure to. Uh, create index, drop index, uh, give some properties uh, of an index, etc. Uh, minimal functional example is also within uh, Postgres source tree. Uh, you can find country bloom, which is a bloom index. Uh, it is not very practical. It was designed to uh, create extension, which have a uh, actual search and is uh, um, is index as extension and more practical example is a ram access method uh, like gene is searching an object by its part and ram is a uh, is gene designed more specifically for text search and uh, ram uh, executes uh, more faster sorting accord according to relevance so it's doing uh, more efficient ranking than sorting results of a gist, uh, gene index search also one important caveat uh, is how do you express your search criteria uh, Postgres is not very good in passing uh, a lot of different criteria into single uh, index scan so here we see that scans through regular b3 
uh, by criteria that we want uh, key equal to one value and key equal to another value uh, goes just through two different uh, bitmap index scans and uh, to mitigate this uh, we usually use a trick which is which can be called query data type when you create a specific data type which uh, describes uh, what exactly you are going to search we see that this uh, type is for, for example text search query which is not atomic at all uh, it contains a lot of information about your information need so you can uh, if you want to uh, have a criteria specific for your data uh, which combines a lot of different idea of searching executed through single index scan uh, you can create specific data type which describes what are you looking for in your access method now let's proceed to ideas so what would you do with ability to create index as extension i started with uh, making a demo for my patches on Comet Fest. so when i'm doing something new for uh, core gist i'm also big port in the same scene into advanced generalized search EGS. Uh, EGS is basically a fork of uh, gist uh, where i main, uh, try try to update most of my patches uh, which i want to see in core and uh, this works for showing some um, benchmarks for uh, trying on different architectures and uh, uh, just like the idea of having my index on my github a uh, few years ago uh, we have had learned indexes uh, paper from google uh, where they propose machine learning for uh, search basically uh, they propose uh, doing uh, machine learning uh, dictionary from uh, key to uh, position in a sorted array well if we had a sorted array uh, mm, like uh, it's already an access method sort array of sorted keys uh, and it works no less efficient than uh, than uh, B3 but B3 provides a lot more uh, OLTP indexes also provide concurrency you you have a lot of inserters uh, in, in B3 uh, you can have a lot of inserters uh, B3 provides predicate locking and uh, B3 provides integration with vacuum and uh, right ahead logging and many many other things uh, well, uh, all these things were not described in uh, learned indexes, so I don't think it's possible to adapt the work uh, of learned indexes to index as extension uh, as for now. But uh, the idea that you can fasten, uh, make faster uh, binary search is uh, worth doing and it has some implications which we, are, we will talk uh, right now. Uh, most of core indexes are generalized indexes so this is the same index for uh, chars for uh, 32 bits integers for uh, variable characters and what if you have just primary key with uh, natural numbers uh, when you search within a B3, you always uh, execute binary search in the keys on a single uh, on each page of a B3. But uh, if uh, you have uh, 200 uh, tuples and you know that first tuple is zero and the last tuple is 199, then it's not big, big deal to find tuple. Uh, for example 88 because it will be in the 88 slot so you can employ Newton search uh, and you can interpolate position uh, of a tuple within a page and it will save you a lot of uh, cache lines uh, touched in uh, shared buffers uh, if you do an index specifically for increasing uh, integers 
uh, also uh, most of indexes contain a lot of uh, abstraction layers which could be avoided in specialized indexes for example here you see that a function uh, b3 compare calls um, function uh, of uh, operator class through uh, uh, scan key function uh, com compare uh, compare function from scan key um, and uh, actually it not zero cost abstraction it cost you pushing uh, bytes to call stack what if for example postgis had their own index they could have uh, for example geometry in just leaf pages and they could avoid rechecking after uh, uh, tuples fetched from index uh, also they could have uh, recently implemented uh, by me the torture sorting build but it was not my idea just my implementation uh, but uh, what it would cost them uh, it would be more code to man maintain because just in a core is advancing and um, they would have to back patch advancing of a uh, gist from a core to their own uh, index as extension uh, also we could make binary search better uh, even with the same uh, level of abstraction for example here we see uh, code for binary search in b3 and uh, it it's uh, doing comparison for middle key and then changes uh, change change uh, the range of a search uh, we can pref in invoke built-in prefetch for both items which which are potential candidates of a next middle uh, uh, middle element of a search thus uh, while we are doing uh, bt compare uh, memory controller is already busy with uh, doing cache prefetch and this saves a uh, few uh, cycles for a CPU and uh, I will uh, also add here a reference on um, uh, hackers discussion for this also uh, you don't have to uh, order tuples on a B3 page uh, in uh, increasing order all you, you should better place them uh, so that uh, if they are accessed they are accessed together uh, for example uh, here if you are going to find uh, tuple number one you will go through tuple a tuple four tuple two and tuple one and if we place tuple eight four and two together uh, they will probably share some parts of a cache lines thus saving us CPU cycles this is what is called Eitzinger layout uh, I will place this scientific paper uh, with slides and it could enhance uh, search within B3 if the B3 is uh, in uh, buffers. But forking of B3 is not that easy. Why we were able to fork just so easily? Because uh, it was contained in just two folders, all the code of gist. Uh, but code of B3 is interleaved in with all other guts of Postgres and you can just try to search of this by uh, checking from uh, other places that uh, the code is actually dealing with b3 and no other indexes uh, it's a big amount of work to fork b3 and yet bigger amount of work uh, to maintain b3 because b3 is now actively developing thanks to peter uh, and uh, but you have some a little similar problem with caches in hash index but you still have gist uh, sp gist uh, and gene and bloom and brin indexes to experiment with and uh, also uh, if we could fork b3 we could implement something similar to log structured merge tree which is uh, optimized right optimized b3 uh, when we have a small b3 for current insertions which is currently in cache and then we are merging and merging these b3s to make uh, less uh, uh, less uh, trees to execute look uh, to execute scans at 
uh, well finally now you know what are covids and how to do uh, how to fork uh, extension from core to your extension and uh, remember that indexes is it is uh, in indexes it's more technique for learning and trying your ideas indexes do not always make queries run faster especially uh, diy indexes this is a research and research is not always yielding um, good results bad result is also result uh, but it's always exact uh, exciting adventure thanks for watching i'm i'm will be ha more than happy to answer your questions uh, at the pgcon or later if you wish to uh, uh, you can contact me via email or telegram thank you very much and see you later